Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to all of you. My name is Sarah Umaira with the RACC and I'm from group 2. So our group's theme is gender and sexualities. So for the first poem, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys and explain to you guys about this poem um, by Frank Bidart which is queer. So let's get started. So the meaning of the poem is so basically the poem talks about people's perspective towards the world towards the role of females and males. Males should be masculine and females should be feminine. These kinds of stereotypes should be changed because no matter what gender you are, you have the right to do anything that please you. Gender is not a choice. All of us were born with only two types of gender which are female and male. As we grew older in our society, um, we we were thought to add like the, the society's perspectives. As for example, the females are supposed to be feminine, to cook and clean, and also to take care of the children. Their behaviors were judged by people and would be mocked by them for not behaving like what they expected. On the other hand, men were expected to be to be masculine and do hard labors like building the house. Being feminine was like a taboo for them as it represents weakness. They should be a role model for the new generations. Expressing feelings would be embarrassing as they should be tough and full of pride and ego. People thought that men are wise and know everything, but little do, but little do they know. All these stereotypes and gender perspectives are ridiculous. It is our right to behave like what we want. Society should not control us because all of us are the same and it is our choice for being who we are. So that is for poem number four. Very good day to everyone. Today I'm going to explain a poem by Zachary Crew entitled The American School of Malice. We'll begin by understanding the first stanza. In the first stanza, the author talk about how he has been living his 19 years of life in the American School of Malice. Uh, all he ever did learn was how to be stupid. Whereas uh, the school actually teaches him, taught him about how to be a man. Uh, moving on to the second stanza. Uh, here, the, uh, the author mentioned that there is no need for brains to spawn. Brawn here means the difference between physical strength and intelligence. Because most of the time, men hardly use their brains at all. They, they, they use their physical abilities more than the users they, they use. Their brain. So uh, the life of the mind did a nose in the books means uh, reading. So uh, this sums up that uh, the act of reading and thinking does not correl correlate with masculinity. In this stanza, the author stated that there are certain cases where men use their brain to their maximum and these men are to be make fun, are to make fun of and are to be embarrassed about because they act they directly directly simplify their manliness. Moving on to the fourth stanza, which is for why would a man pursue intellect? This is one of the most uh, this is one of the society's question on uh, men and masculinity. For why would a man pursue intellect if he could be a footballer, if he could do sports because most of the sports don't don't need uh, a high intelligence so if he do so then he must be a nerd a geek and an outcast he must be an outsider hardly a man at all so more in this stanza we can see that men are divided into two which is the genius and not genius but the not genius one is strong in terms of physical abilities but if there if but what's but what's so weird about this is if they are well known of their physical abilities, so they have and so they have the subs and heavy words, why they can't cook and they can't clean? Because where's the logic? Because actually the logic is applied to the stereotype on house chores are for women. In the sixth stanza, we can see that over all these weaknesses that we spot in this concept. They are, uh, somehow they are proud of this, that they are not shy to show it, to wear it on their sleeves and to show it 
and to show it to our faces. So um, somehow this kind of thing is actually uh, this kind of thing is actually the obvious reason of why to their foolishness, their obvious foolishness. So uh, moving on to in the last stanza, the author insists on getting out of the school because he can't bear it anymore. Uh, he does not want to learn. Uh, he does not want to learn how on how to be a man by society's teaching, but instead he will learn it in his own way. Overall, I think this poem really conveys the truth about men and masculinity from society's point of view, and I personally think that we have to change this mindset. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Azmi Shahbin Nazri. I am from Group 2 and I'm going to present the, the poem If He Says by Nikita Gill. The poem is about gender and sexuality. So let's get on to it. If He Says If He Says Your Body Is Ruined Because It Has Been Touched By Another Man's Hands Before His Ask Him How Many Women's Bodies Have His Hands Ruined And What Is Wrong In His Mind It's A Man's Hands That They Only Know how to ruin a woman's body rather than love it so so let's get on into points presented in the poem there are a few points that we can take from the poem first of all the unequal treatment of women in society most women out there are now being mistreated just because they have a bad past life we must remember that we do not know a person's struggle as we are not in their shoes. The point is that we don't know what the situation are. Secondly, the hypocrisy of men. Every man wants the best woman as their wife but fails to recognize their own flaws. They accuse women that have a bad past as a bad person. These men fail to recognize that the people can always change. Just because someone has a bad past doesn't mean they are going to stay like that forever. Thirdly, Men's responsibility for women. This is a big problem in nowadays society. A man's job is to not destroy nor ruin a woman, but rather to protect and love them. As we all know, men are blessed with an overall better physics and control of emotion. Thus, it's obviously become responsibility for a man to take care of women. Lastly, don't judge a book by its cover. Just because they have a bad past life, or maybe have a physic trauma over them we must not judge them because we are we, do, we doesn't know the situation or we we are not in their shoes so rather than harshly treat them we must protect them and we must guide them to be a better person that's all for me thank you next is poem number four which is gender inequality by software Aziz. so um so the meaning of the poem, Queer by Fran Bida is Be true to yourself because no one else will get the truth out of you. Gender doesn't determine what you will do in your life because it is limitless and everyone has their hands on everything. On everything. The poem talks about how queer people struggle with their identity. They are too afraid um, to tell the truth that they need to lie to everyone, including themselves that could cause them to lose themselves. And also for the gays who were living in the era where being gay was so odd that, that they had to hide their true selves. The boy told us that he came out after his parents died. It is because he was, too, he was too afraid that his mother would be so disappointed in him and not blaming him. Instead, blaming herself for not giving him the right education. But at the end of the day, only we know our inner self and thoughts. So it is better for us to love ourselves first. So that is, that's it for the first poem. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and a very good day. Today, I'm going to dissect the poem Gender Equality by Gangadharan Naripurinya. Stanza 191, which the line is gender equality a hot subject. The poet is trying to say that gender equality has been a big issue at the time. And gender equality will always be a never-ending debatable issue among the society. As we can see, issue of feminism 
that has been around since 18th century is still now a hot subject. Moving on to stanza 192, gender inequality is injustice. The author had opened our views on how different genders are treated differently. The men and women are not treated equal. We have been blaming each other and it leads to discrimination amongst us. In stanza 193, thoughtful arguments persist. As we are living in a community, there are a lot of arguments regarding this issue. Whenever a problem arises, various opinions came out to an extent it created a chaos. This line leaves me pondering on how could we unite if all we do is argue with each other. Next, stanza 195. In education, employment, opportunities. In this line, the author tries to prove where gender inequality has usually taken place. As you can see, in education, we have the perspective that women are smarter than men. In an opportunity in employment, we have this, the stigma that women are weak, which is not true. In fact, it is said that men are better than women as men are emotionally and physically stronger. Is that true? Stanza 198 The great victory that awaits The author knew that we have been wanting to reach gender equality in the society. However, with the power of only one humankind, the long-awaited triumph will not be achieved. So what is the great victory? The great victory symbolizes the gender equality they have been wanting for. Moving on to stanza 1, line 10 and 11, the thoughtful moments for joy happiness ever must be there. The author said that happiness ever would be there when they one when once they achieved gender inequality, gender equality. To achieve that, a community as a whole should give the same treatment to everyone, regardless of their genders, whether being a man or woman. In stanza 1, line 12, gender equality a great freedom. The poet made us ponder about something. How this world could be a better place if we are treated equally without discrimination? We might be living a normal life, a harmony life, being united with society. Don't you agree? I hope this will be enough to dissect the poem. Thank you.